In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Sisters and brothers, on this day of Pentecost, of the outpouring of the Holy Spirit upon the early church, we are united in solidarity with the church all over the world, asking that the Holy Spirit should descend upon us. Recreate us as individuals and recreate our brothers and sisters all over the place and renew the face of the earth. We need the face of our country renewed. We need our society recreated. We need the hearts of our leaders recreated and renewed that the suffering persons in this country may be begin to breathe some fresh air to the glory of God. Let us ask that we may be transformed, we Christians, so that we may be agents of national transformation. Let us now call to mind our sins and be sorry for them. I confess to Almighty God that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault, therefore I ask blessed Mary, our Virgin, all angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, pray for me. May Almighty God have mercy on us. May He forgive us our sins and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ of mercy, Lord, have mercy. Sing glory. 
Let us pray. O oh God, who by the mystery of today's great feast sanctify your whole church in every people and nation, pour out, we pray, the gifts of the Holy Spirit across the face of the earth. And with the divine grace that was at work when the gospel was first proclaimed, feel now once more the hearts of believers through our Lord Jesus Christ your son who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit one God forever and ever A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place, and suddenly a sound came from heaven, like the rush of a mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared to them tongues as of fire, distributed and resting on each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Now there were dwelling in Jerusalem Jews, devout men from every nation under heaven. And at this sound, the multitude came together, and they were bewildered, because each one heard them speaking in his own language. And they were amazed and wondered, saying, Are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear, each of us in his own native language? Parthians and Medes and Elamites and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabians. We hear them telling in our own tongues the mighty works of God. The word of the Lord. Lord, send forth your spirit and renew the face of the earth. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. O oh Lord, my God, how great you are. How many are your works, O oh Lord. The earth is full of your creatures. You take away their breath. They die, returning to the dust from which they came. You send forth your spirit, and they are created, and you renew the face of the earth. God, send forth your spirit, and renew the face of the earth. May the glory of the Lord last forever. May the Lord rejoice in his works. May my thoughts be pleasing to him. I will rejoice in the Lord. A reading from the book of Galatians. Brethren, walk by the Spirit and do not gratify the desires of the flesh. 
For the desires of the flesh are against the spirit, and the desires of the spirit are against the flesh. For these are opposed to each other, to prevent you from doing what you would. But if you are led by the spirit, you are not under the law. Now the works of the flesh are plain, immorality, impurity, licentiousness, idolatry, sorcery, enmity, strife, jealousy, anger, selfishness, dissension, party spirit, envy, drunkenness, carousing, and the like. I warn you, as I warned you before, that those who do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such there is no law. And those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. If we live by the Spirit, let us also walk by the Spirit. Let us have no self-conceit, no provoking of one another, no envy of one another. The Word of the Lord. Hallelujah for the Lord God of potent reigneth. Hallelujah. the hearts of your faithful and kindle in them the fire of your love. Alleluia. <laughs> Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. At that time, Jesus said to his disciples, When the counselor comes, whom I shall send to you from my Father, even the Spirit of truth, who proceeds from the Father, he will bear witness to me. And you also are witnesses because you have been with me from the beginning. I have yet many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. When the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all the truth. For he will not speak on his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak, and he will declare to you the things that are to come. He will glorify me, for he will take what is mine and declare it to you. The Gospel of the Lord. Late questions for today. Question number one. When we pray, as we often do, send forth your spirits 
and they shall be created, and thou shalt renew the face of the earth. When we do such invocation of the Spirit, what exactly are we asking God to do for us? Question two. Quote, people can live or act under the influence of the Holy Spirit or they can live and act under the influence of the evil spirit or they can live and act under the influence of the human spirit. How are we supposed to recognize a life that is undoubtedly being led by the Holy Spirit? Question three, what is the coming of the Holy Spirit today supposed to do for us Nigerian Christians in this difficult and challenging times of widespread insecurity, of widespread economic distress, of widespread political tension and mutual distrust? Question four, lists the gifts and the fruits of the Holy Spirit and explain the differences between the two categories. Nine gifts of the Holy Spirit and nine fruits of the Holy Spirit. List them. It should be a prize for somebody who gets them correct. Yes, uh, Solomon, you are welcome. Begin, since you have been away. Thank you, Father. I have to attempt question number two. How can we undoubtedly recognize a person being led by the Holy Spirit? Now, I'll begin by making reference to Matthew chapter 7, verse 15 to 20. Matthew chapter 7, verse 15, 15 to 20. 20. Christ says there that it's only a healthy tree can give or that can bring forth good fruit. And that, only, and that bad tree cannot produce no okay. fruit. So and it's actually up to verse 21. 21. Thank you, Father. So, the ways we can recognize that persons are living by, or they're being led by the Spirit, are actually those fruits of the Spirit that are being practiced by that individual. By their fruits you shall know yeah, them. By their fruits you shall know them. Yeah. And has Jesus already given us the fruits? Yes, has he Jesus has. given us indications of what those fruits are? Yes, he has, Father. Okay, and, yes. and has St. Paul given us? Clearly, by today's second reading. Uh, okay. In Galatians chapter 5, verse uh, 22. The nine fruits of the Spirit. Okay. And so if an individual lives out his life according to the tenets, practically, actually, daily, then of course we can now say that that person is not led by the human spirit or by the evil spirit. Rather, he is led by the spirit of God which clearly gives that person the gifts of the spirit which now reflects in the... In, in our spirit. kind of circumstance today, how would you recognize that? Because you see, yes. the circum our circumstance in this country clearly, you can hardly recognize one person, who is who? We behave almost the same way. So how can you recognize now in our, our kind of... Now, our country, Nigeria today, is being plagued with a number of vices, mostly ethnic bigotry, fanatism, greed, avarice, and so on and so forth. So what we can look out for, that for example, if I, be, I, I come from a dual state, I shouldn't behave or act in a way to confine myself to that region of the country. So I should not be regional in my outlook, rather I should be nationalistic in my approach. And so, the way, the simple way we can recognize persons who are led by the Spirit are simply that these persons are not going along with the bandwagon, with what is rife in the country. They are not going along with the bandwagon. Yes. They, they, um, they can dare to be different. Okay. In whatever circumstance, in family life, in work life, on whatever, the, on whatever, the streets. Whatever. They dare to be different. Give him a round of applause. Thank you, sir. Yes. All right, Jay. I'd like to attempt question three. 
Three? Yes, Father. Okay, briefly, because it's already been answered, right? Question three. Oh, three. Okay, thank you. What is the coming of the Holy Spirit today supposed to do for Nigerian Christians in these challenging times? I'd like to start by, first, the coming of the Holy Spirit today, considering what Jesus Christ has spoken to us about the person of the Holy Spirit, is actually to gladden the hearts of Nigerian Christians present. So the first thing is that it, we sh our hearts should be gladdened. Yes. We should not leave this chapel with long faces as some people used to do. So if you see anybody with a long face today, say, ah, 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 I thought you have just celebrated the Holy Spirit. It should gladden our hearts. And if it gladdens our hearts, it should show in our faces, isn't it? Yes, Father. Next. Yes, it should gladden our hearts, you know, and cause us to go with great rejoicing. And the reason being that the Holy Spirit, Christ speaks about him as the comforter, as the advocate, as the intercessor. So in the challenges of our country, we know we have a comforter. We have a helper. And we know that no matter what we face, we'll be strengthened by the Holy Spirit to live. So, so after celebrating this, we should have hope. Yes. Because we have within us, in our persons and in our community, we have a comforter. Yes. We have an advocate. Yes. So we should go, unlike, okay, you are a lawyer, right? Yes. Like when, they, uh, when a, pris a prisoner, uh, somebody, somebody has been detained by police, and all other people who are detained, they have gotten lawyer. And one person has no lawyer. How is he going to feel? Downcast. <laughs> Downcast. Now, when somebody eventually comes, eh? Nigerian Legal Council, what do you call it? Legal Aid. Legal Aid Council. When they now send somebody to him, he's going to begin to smile. Even though he's still in prison, isn't it? Please take note of that. He's still in detention. But he's going to begin to smile. Yeah. Why? I now have an advocate. Then the other so, our smiling today is not that our problem is over. No. We are still in some kind of Nigerian police detention, which is not a good place to be. Ah, you are looking at me as if, we are not in, as if we are not in some kind of detention. We are still in some kind of detention, detained by our, police, our politicians, detained by our political leaders, Detained by our, a lot of our elites, political elites that have put us in this detention. But we can begin to smile because the Spiritual Legal Aid Council has sent us an advocate, an advocate uh, working on our behalf. A round of applause for him. <laughs> yes. And lastly, I want to say, Jesus Christ says, when the Holy Spirit comes, you receive power. And you'll be emboldened to go out and be a witness. So for us Christians, we need not be afraid to stand for our faith, to stand and spread the gospel because we have the strength of the spirit. And no matter what we face, no matter the persecution, we will definitely come out victorious. You will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you and then you will be my disciples, meaning you will have the courage you require. You will have the power you require to give witness. Give her a round of applause. Yes, Emmanuel. Question one. Yes. When we pray, send forth your spirit and they shall be created and thou shalt renew the face of the earth. What exactly are we asking God to do for us? Like on Pentecost, when the Holy Spirit was sent, like, uh, whenever we are without God, like I said, we have a gap inside us. We're not fully... Are you speaking with experience? Fully. Are you speaking from experience? Whenever we are without God, there is emptiness inside us. Yes. Is it a, what you read? Or read you, are it somewhere. you are speaking from experience? I've read it somewhere, that's what I said. Okay, you have no experience. Some of these so, people here, they, they have experience. Okay. Yes. So it is that Holy Spirit that will fill that gap, that will give us the courage to do what we need to do and will make us to be recreated, to be born again, like Jesus said when he was speaking to Nicodemus. Okay. And thou shalt renew the face of the earth. It's only the Holy Spirit, it's only God who can change all our circumstances, our current circumstances. It's only him that can change them for the better. Only him that can renew the face of the earth, like... He said in the Only he who created the earth from a 
formless void in the first place. Genesis chapter 1 from verse 1, we read that the earth was a formless void. What does formless void mean? It means confusion. It means confusion. There was no order. The earth was a formless void. It was all darkness, pitch darkness, confusion. And then there was a voice. Let there be light. So it is the same God who created an ordered world out of orderlessness or chaos is the same one who can recreate the world. Give me a round of applause. <laughs> Let people who have experience speak now, who have experience of the void inside when there is no, when God is when God has been chased out. Yes. You have some experience, right? I wish to attempt question number four. Yes. List the gifts and the fruits of the Holy Spirit and explain the differences between the two categories. Yes. As captured in the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians, chapter 12, verse 1, Verse 8 to 11. The, the gifts of the Holy Spirit include wisdom, understanding, prophecy, gift of tongues, knowledge, piety, forbearance, and self control. Hey, you have mixed different things. Um, 70%. 70%. Well, I go to the other one. While the fruits of the Holy Spirit are love, joy, peace, kindness, goodness, gentleness, patience, self control. 70%. <laughs> who, who wants to help him? So, so the gifts are, are okay. what we receive from God, are the gifts from God. And the fruits are what we make of the gifts. Of oh, God. Very, very good definition, actually. The gifts are the things we receive from God. The fruits are what we make of the... And the fruits are, as Emmanuel has explained, are what shows that indeed we have the Holy Spirit, the evidence, what we make of it. Um, okay. Question number three, does anybody have something to add about what is the coming of the Holy Spirit today? What is it supposed to do for us Nigerians, apart from what Raji has said about comforting us, making us able to smile in spite, in spite of being in the detention of Nigerian political uh, um, dealers and wheelers. Uh, we are in that detention. But what else, what else is it supposed to do? for us in these challenging times. Yes, Edebert. If we look at what happened on Pentecost the, Day, um, the coming of the Holy Spirit brought some kind of unity. Correct, the coming of the Holy Spirit brought some kind of unity. As it is said in many theological circles, the disintegration of, the, of Babel was reversed. The disintegration that happened. As you know, the people of Babel, you read in Genesis, they were people of one language. But they were scattered and they could not understand one another. On this day, Pentecost, people of diverse languages began to understand themselves. So it's a complete reversal. So unity. Unity. Yes. So one of the, uh, one of the things that the Holy Spirit is supposed to be able to do for us, is supposed to do for us if we are open to it, is to unite us. Yes. So um, in, in that unity, we begin to see ourselves as one, uh, one people that are created by one God. One uh, people with even the people who are who are killing people. Are you one with them? Of course, they are. They are just that um, they are going astray. They are going astray. And also, we should try to be um, compassionate with them and pray that they come back um, to the fold. 
and work with, and, 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 and also not only pray, but work to have the kind of leadership that knows how to handle that. That's because right. you see, we are like living in a jungle where we are at the mercy of people who misbehave. And it shouldn't be so. I mean, a society, societies are set up so that the, um, the dangerous aggressor does not have opportunity to deal with the innocent victim like that. That the innocent person is protected against the aggressor. That's why societies are set up. And so when people say this is a failed state, uh, those who speak for government say, no, 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 no. I mean, how can you say you're an enemy of Nigeria? No, no, no. I mean, if, if society fails to do what it's supposed to do, if government fails to do what it's supposed to do for people, the raison d'etat, the, the real reason, the fundamental reason for governance to, re, to exist is, one, to protect the innocent person against the unjust aggressor, number one. Two, to work for the welfare of everyone in society. If everyone in society is not having welfare and innocent people are being hacked to death, then it is time for us to act. Do we have a government or do we not? Yes, yes and the Holy Spirit also will, well, should also help our leaders, like you just uh, uh, said, so that they will understand what um, the will of God, the plan of God is for the country and, and, and work by the... If our the leaders country. submit themselves to the Holy Spirit, they will be guided because all authority comes from God. Yes. And it is only those who are linked to God in some way that can lead well. Right? That's right. So if they, if, if they submit to God, so we urge our leaders to submit themselves to God and to God's will, then they will know what to do because right now they are fumbling. Right now, those in leadership positions are fumbling. If our circumstances keep getting worse, then it's like you don't know what to do. And all of us, if we receive the gift of the Holy Spirit and make our good fruits of the Spirit from it, then it means that our country will... If all of us, even if it is only, only those of us who are Christians, if we receive the Holy Spirit and we are bearing the fruits of the Holy Spirit, then we will contribute our quota for the transformation of our country. Like I keep saying, only 12 people. Jesus trained only 12 people. They went out, recruited a few more, and transformed the ancient world. And we can still see the impact of the work they did. Even though many Europeans are not going to church, their societies and the structures they have put in place were often values that they got from the Christian faith, true or false. So, if indeed our hearts are transformed, our lives are transformed, our families are transformed, our children are transformed, then we shall soon see the end to this detention that we are in. Give him a round of applause. <laughs> Pentecost, the outpouring of, the whole, of, of new life. In John's Gospel, chapter 3, verse 5, Jesus says to Nicodemus, remember that passage at night, In all truth I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born through water and the Spirit. What is born of human nature is human, and what is born of the Spirit is Spirit. So, from the very early part of the Gospel, Jesus began to talk about the Spirit. As you know, John the Baptist baptized in water alone. And it was only baptism of repentance. It was an outward demonstration that I am ready to repent. So the soldiers that came to him, the tax collectors that came to him, the others that came to him, they came with a readiness to repent and change their corrupt ways, their evil ways. And when they were washed in the waters of, of, of the Jordan, it was um, an outward sign that they are ready to begin to live a new life. That was the baptism of John. So the Old Testament had some form of baptism. But when Jesus Christ sent his disciples out to baptize, he says, baptize in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And we already saw it 
early now, when Jesus says in John chapter 3, that what is human is human. But unless somebody is born of water and the Holy Spirit, which is why the Christian church baptizes people in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and with water. The Holy Spirit is the paraclet, paracletus. It's a Greek word for advocate. One who supports somebody in need. Who speaks for. Who promotes the interest of. Who defends. The advocate, the paraclet, the Holy Spirit is also the intercessor. The one that pleads our cause. You know that there is, there is prayer for myself and then there is prayer of intercession. When I pray for you, it's a different kind of prayer when I pray for myself. Praying for you or praying for others is called what? Intercession. So the Holy Spirit prays in us and prays for us. The Holy Spirit is the defender in time of trial or trouble. He's the defender. The Holy Spirit, we have already mentioned, is the comforter, one who provides consolation, a friend, a guardian, one who just stands with a friend. Some of the most profound forms of consolation is just presence. And the Holy Spirit is present with us, consoling us, comforting us. The Holy Spirit is the vindicator, the one who bears witness in us to the message of salvation, who testifies to the truth of Christ, to the truth of our faith. Jesus Christ says, the Holy Spirit will convict the world that how wrong the world was. The Holy Spirit will convince the world of the truth I'm saying to you now. And he says, what I am saying now will be too much for you now. But when the Holy Spirit comes, he will explain everything to you. He will vindicate me. He will show the world how wrong the world has been. So the Holy Spirit is indeed vindicated. The Holy Spirit is the spirit of truth. Jesus has already introduced himself as the way, the truth, and the life. We are already aware that we serve a God who is truth. And it is only by being linked with the truth that we can live the life of God. Truth is so important. Was it last week or the week before we watched that movie on truth? Last Sunday. The one who vindicates Jesus in all that Jesus said and, and did. And all that Jesus said and did amount to what? Truth. The one who would show the world how wrong it has been on many grounds. And the world who will continue to show the world. Today's world is wrong on many grounds. Today's world, people begin, continue to think that it is by aggression. Self-assertion. What they call self-actualization. That will grant true fulfillment. The Holy Spirit will help people to recognize that it is only when we live like Jesus, though his state was divine, he did not cling to his equality with God. Philippians chapter 2, verse 6 to 11. That is only when we live like that. But the world is saying, no, those who make it in the world, those who succeed through the world have to be aggressive. And Jesus Christ says, blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. The world says, no, if I am meek, people will trample upon me. The meek person is not a weak person. The meek person is a powerful person but who does not use his power. Do you understand? The meek person is not a weak person. The meek person is actually a very powerful person. But powerful person who does not use his power. So the world has been wrong on many grounds. The world thinks that it is the one who has who has power and uses it to acquire what a whole community, a whole village, a whole town is supposed to have, the one who has the power to acquire it for himself or herself. That's the successful person. That is why 
Today's world is so fascinated by celebrity. I call it acute celebrity syndrome. Acute celebrity syndrome. Where just that somebody is celebrity, it doesn't matter in celebrity in what, everybody is following the person. I mean, it's, it's you know, just yesterday I, I was checking uh, uh, God's time. I was checking one of those your websites about uh, those agencies in your place. They want the commercial one. What is it? Eh? One of those agencies that the one supposed to distribute satellites and all blah, 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 and so on. I was checking the website and we, we saw only five subscribers. Zero five. I mean, this is an agency that is supposed to launch Nigeria into a digital world with all kinds of things. And over a five-year period. Oh. <laughs> 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 eh? One, per One per year, yes. Actually, actually, Mike decided out of pity to be one of the <laughs> subscribers and he subscribed there. But then you check the blog site or of, of a, a lot of these people who are contributing next to nothing to national development. And there's a million followers. Because the world of today thinks that if you are popular and you are able to do some outrageous things, including things that used to be called abominable, but you are popular, and I call it notorious, then you have plenty of following. The reason is this, that the world is wrong on many grounds. And all Christians need to know that we are operating in a world that is wrong on many grounds. In many directions, the world is wrong. I mean, somebody who is really humble, we call such person mumu. Not so. If you are in an office and you are not able to do some terrible things in this country, aren't you called Mumu? The Holy Spirit will show us how wrong the world is and how right Jesus' way is. I mean, Jesus demonstrates to us in Matthew chapter 5 from verse 3 to 12 what is his own way. Blessed are the poor in spirit. For theirs is the kingdom of heaven. The arrogant person is not poor in spirit. The aggressor is not poor in spirit. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Believe it or not, the meek, in spite of what our conquerors are doing and have done, Jesus says what? The meek shall inherit the earth. So you better belong to the class of the meek if you want to inherit the earth. On a lasting basis. Yes, today, tomorrow, like the grass that grows today and tomorrow it withers, there are people all over the place who are making it according to the way of the world. But I hold on to the word of Jesus. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Then he says, blessed are those who mourn. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. All who are in the detention of the Nigerian political elite, who are groaning, who are wailing, who are troubled about our Nigerian circumstance today, who see children in this society and are wondering, what does this society have to offer for these children? All those who are crying and are weeping and are mourning on account of our terrible circumstances today, Jesus says, they shall be comforted. Blessed are those who hunger and, and, and thirst for righteousness. For they shall be satisfied. All Christians, all followers of Jesus are supposed to be daily hungering for righteousness. Hungering for holiness. And that's why we need the Holy Spirit. To inspire us to daily hunger after righteousness. 
especially in a world of darkness, in a world of corruption, in a world of, you know, dog eats dog. We need to hunger and pray for righteousness, for holiness. Then you see, in a world of, that is so divided, in a society that is so divided, where there's so much acrimony, ethnic acrimony, political acrimony, blessed are the peacemakers. Inya and I and uh, Bishi and Henry and others here, our collaborators have been making all kinds of uh, programs to promote peace, even as we appear to be going down. That we are not giving up. We have no other country. We are walking on, promoting peace. Because I take seriously the words of Jesus. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called children of God. Yes, blessed are the, are the merciful, for they shall be shown mercy. So even as evil rages, violence rages, if we are merciful at heart, then as Chidebere says, what will be coming out of our heart? Compassion, prayer, benefit of doubt, mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. That we take those seeds. These are the ways of Christ that the world does not understand. The Holy Spirit will show us how wrong the world has been and how right Jesus is. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake. And indeed, the few righteous persons in this country are often persecuted, maligned, humiliated. Take the words of Jesus seriously because he is right. He is the way. He is the truth. The devil is a liar. And so it doesn't matter. If the devil reigns for 10,000 years, it doesn't matter. We will reign forever. Those who belong to Jesus will reign for... You know, when you talk about 10,000 years, it looks so long. But I hope you know that the world has existed for millions of years. And our own existence is beyond this world. It's into eternity. Blessed are you when men persecute you, abuse you, speak all kinds of calumny against you on my account. Rejoice and be glad, it says, or your reward will be great in heaven. Listen, if you don't believe in heaven, if you don't believe in eternal life, you have no business being here. Because everything we shall be saying will not make sense to you. Do you understand? Those who are going to church only in order to have what it takes to survive and make it big in this world, I pity you. It is a pity. Anyone who is going to church just to make it big in this world, Going to church so that you may have God's blessing to win all those contracts. You may have God's blessing to marry the best person. You may have God's blessings to, you know, to, to be a celebrity in this world. I say I pity you as St. Paul says. St. Paul says in chapter 15 verse 19 of First Corinthians. He says, if our hope in Christ were for this world alone, then of all people were to be most pitied. So they are not my words. They are words of St. Paul. You know why? Because no matter how big you make it in this world, one day you will see the raw, raw part of life. I mean, I, I sat down yesterday watching the burial ceremony of the unfortunate incident that happened in Kaduna two days ago. These people had their plans, right? For tomorrow, next, tomorrow, next year, 10 years' time. And just, just like that. And that is a lot of humanity. All those people who are gathered there yesterday, who knows the next person? Nobody knows. And the lesson we are supposed to learn from it, do we learn it? No. Or do you think that you would necessarily be shielded from such simply because you are a Christian? No. Has it not happened to Christians? Has it not happened to very good Christians? That's our lot in this world. That is why we cannot hold on to anything in this world. And it is so important that God has hidden it from us when we will die. The reason is so that we will seek him and hold on to him daily in this world. Yes, the Holy Spirit will be the one who will lead the disciples to the full truth. Jesus is the definitive revelation of the Father. 
The Spirit will confirm all that Jesus taught. It will bring about for every age a renewed or deeper understanding of God's revelation of, God, of God's revelation in Christ. Before ascending to heaven, Jesus said to his disciples in Acts 1 8, Not many days from now, you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. Then you will be my disciples, my witnesses, not only in Jerusalem and Judea, but throughout Judea and Samaria and indeed throughout the world. The Holy Spirit was given to believers as the first fruits of Christ's redemptive work. It is the first taste of the beatific vision. What is beatific vision? The vision of glory. The vision of the beauty of God and the, and the, the glory of God. So, when the Holy Spirit was given on Pentecost Day, it was the first taste of that glory. The Spirit whets the appetite of Christians for the kingdom. Take note of that. That those of us who have the Spirit, our appetites are wet for us to be hungering for the kingdom. That's why I said, if you go to church only to pray for material benefits, then your Appetite is not yet triggered for the kingdom. You are not, if, if the kingdom and your ascending to the kingdom, to be part of the kingdom, if that is not your most profound longing, then something is wrong. We need an initial conversion to Christ. The Holy Spirit is the breath of God. We remember that Jesus Christ, even before Pentecost, said to them, he breathed on them and said, receive the Holy Spirit. The breath of God, the Rua of God, the Numa of God, blowing through the world, recreating the world, renewing the world, sustaining the world. Then there is Spirit as the fire of God. The Holy Spirit is the fire of God's love, enlightening humanity, igniting the flame of love in our hearts, conquering the darkness of hate, Overcoming sin and corruption. Fire cleanses. Then the Holy Spirit is also the water from the fountain of God. It is the water from the fountain of God. What does it do? Cleansing, purifying, energizing, and inspiring new conduct. The Holy Spirit or the coming of the Holy Spirit, which we call Pentecost, marks a new beginning. Celebrates a new beginning. It is the birthday of the church. So what we celebrate today is the day the church came into being. It is a new creation. It is the overturning of the divisions among people represented by the Tower of Babel. Genesis chapter 11 verse 1 to 9. God has intervened powerfully in the world thanks to Pentecost. What is he doing? Remolding the world. Redesigning the world, renewing believers. The Holy Spirit is our strength, our source of strength, our source of courage. The Holy Spirit enables Christians to become signs of contradiction to the negative currents of their age. I already made, gave some illustrations about that. There are so many negative currents in our time, in our age. Every age has its own negative currents. And our own is all written all over the place. Our own is on billboards. It's on Facebook and other social media. It's everywhere. Instagram. YouTube. The negative currents of the age. What the Holy Spirit does is empower Christians, enable Christians to be signs of contradiction. What does that mean? To dare to be different. To dare to stand in contradiction with what is reigning in the world. I mean, I have explained here that majority of human beings behave like teenagers. Even people who are 60, 50, 40, behave like teenagers. And what is peculiar about teenagers? They can't be alone. They must be part of the crowd. Do you know that? Teenagers must be part of a crowd. They, can't be, they, they, they hate being alone. So it is difficult for Christians 
for, for teenagers to dare to be different. Unfortunately, people become adults and they still find it difficult to be different. That is why what is trendy, I mean, you, you, you ask, um, you ask, I, I told you how, ask some young person, oh, why are you wearing what you are wearing? He said, because it's, it's the trend. It's in vogue. That is, that's what is trendy. You don't like it. I, I, I bet that you don't like it. Hey, it doesn't matter, but that is what it is. But an adult behavior is that, well, every other person may be wearing this, but I don't like it, or it's not comfortable for me. You remember when I told you that I saw the former, I saw the former, it was, and she was wearing this thing that had split all over the place, and she was doing like this when wind was blowing. She was doing like this. And I said, ah, well, he said, Father, but that is the strength. That's a teenage behavior. <laughs> Oh, Florence, you, too, you used to have that kind of... Uh, <laughs> as teenage behavior. Unfortunately, 50-year-olds are still behaving like that. True or false? Yesterday, in the last Sunday's uh, thing about truth, demonstrate that sufficiently too. We need the courage of the Holy Spirit, the courage the Holy Spirit bestows to go against the current of what? Individualism. Materialism. Hedonism. Hedonism means the worship of pleasure. Ethnic bigotry. Religious intolerance. Corruption and moral decadence. Widespread human degradation. How do you go against the current of widespread human degradation? You receive things. You just forward. You don't even read it. There are many things I receive that I cannot forward because it degrades human beings. Our culture, the culture, our, our social media culture is very, very raw, undeveloped. You know, a lot of people, we have suffered so much in the past about no phone, that when this phone came, people just went wild. When social media came, people just went wild, posting all kinds of stupid things. Do you know what it means? If you have... A relation, God forbid, that died in an accident and you first see the charred body on social media. Isn't that terrible? That's human degradation. Human degradation. When the doctors are examining a patient intimately, what do they do? They cordon off the place to examine the patient. Now, we have gotten, because we have social media and everybody is a photographer, and a filmmaker. We record everything, even somebody who is groaning in pain. We need, the Holy Spirit will give us the grace to stand against this. The world needs spirit filled Christians to witness powerfully to a life of discipline. In fact, some of what I'm saying is about discipline, isn't it? Discipline, holiness, and wholeness. One of the greatest issues we have in this country is the lack of discipline. In a world of rampant sin and corruption, hatred and violence, ethnic bigotry as well as superstition, and if you think that superstition has reduced in Nigeria, it has not reduced. From what we see around and the news we hear around, people are getting more and more superstitious, primitive, which is to say that they have all this Christian education but Christian education has not gone through them. And the widespread abuse of religion. I mean, religion is being abused big time. We really need to do something about it, all of us who care about the Christian religion. The Lord is calling us Christians to become signs of contradiction to our troubled world and country. We will do this by showing love and Demonstrating by the conduct of our lives that what? Selfishness and greed, hatred and wickedness, vengeance and violence will not lead us anywhere. See where it has led us. See where selfishness and greed has led Nigeria. Those who think that it is by appointing their nephews and relations and in-laws into big positions. See where it has led us. I mean, we are, I mean we're so foolish. Now, 
If you are setting up a serious business and you want the business to grow, do you go and get your cousin from the village to come and run the company? Don't you look for who is the best manager to put there? How come that when we are doing government, we now bring, put all our cousins in place? At the end of the day, just as a business will collapse if you put all your brothers there, in the same way, the country is collapsing. The Lord is calling us to hold on courageously to the truth in a world of falsehood, to the relentless pursuit of justice and peace in a world of widespread injustice, violence, and war, to the values of chastity and purity and modesty in a world of rampant promiscuity and sexual abuse. The Lord is calling us to hold courageously to a life of humility, service, and self-sacrifice in a world of inordinate pride and arrogance. I mean, pride, pride. Many of us proud, are proud every day. But who are you? Just one little thing kicks you out of this world. You know, my people used to say that you put your hand on your chest and say, hey, me, me. You, who are you? Even a tiny little mosquito can kill you. The Lord wants us to hold on courageously to a life of frugality and modesty in a world of Primordial greed and avarice. The world needs the Holy Spirit to infuse the breath of Christ into dying persons. Many people in our society are dying on account of living the life of the evil one. On account to, to, to infuse the Holy Spirit into dying families and dying communities. The world needs the Holy Spirit to help remove the shame of corruption and champion the cause of moral degradation in our country. To wake up sleeping Christians from their slumber and help enlighten others in our society who are dwelling in darkness and depravity. We need the Holy Spirit, surely, to bestow on us the grace of mutual forgiveness for past hurts and wounds which are still pursuing us seriously, harassing us, haunting us, to free us from the tyranny of self-indulgence and all the vices that go with it, such as anger and lust and greed and avarice. St. Paul says in Galatians 5.1, it is for freedom that Christ has set us free. Do not let yourself be dragged back into slavery. Yes, we need the Holy Spirit to set us free from the sinful habits that enslave us. Now, the fruits of self-indulgence. The fruits of self-indulgence are sexual vice as listed in Galatians 19 to 21. They are what? Sexual vice and impurity, sensuality and worship of false gods, antagonism and rivalry, jealousy and bad temper, quarrels and disagreements, factions and malice, drunkenness, and orgies. Yes, the fruits of the Spirit are what? Classically, as is listed, are what? Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, truthfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Galatians 5, 22-23. Now, the gifts of the Holy Spirit, as listed in Isaiah chapter 11, verse 1 to 2, are what? Wisdom and understanding, knowledge and good counsel, piety and fortitude, and the fear of God. Please take note of that. This is clearly as it is listed in these passages. Fruits of the Holy Spirit and gifts of the Spirit. Don't confuse them, please. We need the Holy Spirit to heal our minds and bodies, to heal our homes and our communities, to heal our country, and to renew the face of the earth. We need the Holy Spirit to heal the conflicts within our very selves. It is because of conflicts in ourselves that the com we see the conflicts outside, which often render our lives so fragmented. It is because of conflicts inside us that our moral lives and our uh, physical lives and our spiritual lives are not aligned, are not consistent. We need the Holy Spirit to heal the divisions between individuals and groups, including husbands and wives and parents and children, communities and ethnic groups, as well as people of different political parties. Yes, we need the Holy Spirit to unite our families, our churches, our country, and our world 
to remove the blindness from our eyes, to pull down the walls of division and overcome the land prejudices that have kept us apart. I say learned prejudices because a lot of our prejudices are learned. We didn't, we were not born with them. We learned them. To bring us together once again so that we may recognize that indeed we are brothers and sisters, children of the same parents. Veni Sancte Spiritu Oh, come, Holy Spirit, we fill our hearts with your love. Veni Sancte Spiritu Oh, come, holy fire, fill our hearts with your fire. Veni, the Spirit, oh, 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 Veni, the Spirit, oh, oh, come. Holy Spirit, make us holy as you are holy. Veni Sancte Spiritu, oh, 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 Veni Sancte Spiritu. Come, Holy Spirit, Lord of Light, from the clear celestial heights, thy pure beaming radiance give. Come, thou father of the poor. Come with the treasures that to endure. Come, thou light of all that live. Oh, come, light immortal, light divine. Visit now these hearts of thine, and our inmost being feel. For without thy grace, all turns, all turns to ill. Veni Sancte Spiritu. Oh, oh, oh. Come, Holy Spirit, feel our hearts, heal our wounds, our strength renew. On our dryness, pour thy dew, wash the stains of guilt away. Bend the stubborn heart and will. Melt the frozen, warm the chill, guide our steps when we go astray. Come, light immortal, light divine, visit now these hearts of thine and our inmost being feel. For without thy grace, all turns to ill. Veni Sancte Spiritu, oh, oh, oh. Veni Sancte Spiritu. Come, Creator Spirit, come. Fill the hearts of your faithful and kindle in them the fire of your love. Recreate the world and renew the face of the earth. Come, O Spirit of unity and agent of oneness. Bind us together in the love of the Trinity. Come, Holy Spirit of goodness. Take all our ailments away. Restore our injured bodies and heal our wounded hearts. Come, Holy Spirit, wipe away the tears of all who weep and take away the burdens of pain and regret and transform our sorrows to joy. Veni Sancte Spiritu, oh, 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 Veni Sancte Spiritus, O oh, 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 Veni Sancte Spiritus, Veni Sancte Spiritus, O oh, oh, Veni Sancte Spiritus. Amen. That's right. I believe in one God.
sisters and brothers, let us now turn to God as one body in Christ, praying for the church, for the world, and for our troubled country, Nigeria. That on this gracious day, the Lord will renew, indeed renew the face of the earth, renew the face of our country, and renew each one of our lives with the fire of his love, as indeed on the first Pentecost day. For the Holy Father Pope Francis, for bishops and for all church leaders and Christian faithful that through the outpouring of the Holy Spirit we may all be bound together into a community of faith committed to love and service. We pray, O oh Lord. For leaders and policymakers in our country and in the entire world who guide the destiny of nations and peoples, that the Holy Spirit may be may direct their feet unto the way of justice and equity, which make for lasting peace. We pray, O oh Lord. For those who are enslaved by sinful habits. Those entrapped in the darkness of ignorance and superstition. And those in the poison of doubt and fear. That today the Holy Spirit may help them experience the joy and the freedom of the children of God as on the first Pentecost. We pray, O oh Lord. For all the direct victims of the widespread violence in our land. For those suffering poverty and unemployment at this time. For those who are struggling with illnesses and diseases. For those in difficult marital and family relationships. As well as those experiencing loneliness and abandonment that the Holy Spirit may wipe away their tears and soon change their fortunes unto good. We pray, O Lord. Lord hear our Let us pray for all our children as we soon mark Children's Day on 27th of May, that in spite of the difficult circumstances in which our children are growing today, they may nevertheless, by God's grace, succeed in living a life of meaning, purpose, and the fear of the Lord. And may leaders at all levels make sufficient provision for the care and education of our children. We pray, O oh Lord. Lord hear and for the evangelization and leadership development programs of Luke Stereo Leadership Foundation, and for the intentions of its partners and benefactors. We pray, O oh Lord. Lord hear our Let us now add our personal intentions in silence. Let us ask for the intercession of the Blessed Virgin Mary. Lord of grace, Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our Almighty Father, God of love, on the first Pentecost day, you sent the Holy Spirit on the apostles, and with hearts on fire, they went forth to preach the gospel to the world. Grant that today, we too may experience the power of the Holy Spirit in our lives, and give loud witness to it before the world. We ask this through Christ our Lord.
and brothers that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. Amen. Grant we pray, O Lord, that as promised by your Son, the Holy Spirit may reveal to us more abundantly the hidden mystery of this sacrifice and graciously lead us into all truth through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For bringing your Paschal mystery to completion, you bestowed the Holy Spirit today on those you made your adopted children by uniting them to your only begotten Son. This same Spirit, as the church came to birth, opened to all peoples the knowledge of God and brought together the many languages of the earth in profession of the one faith. Therefore, overcome with Paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and the working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, he broke the bread, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, he gave it to his disciples, saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of our faith. Therefore, as, uh, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son and his res wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body and one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, St. Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. 
May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on it, with your servant Francis, our Pope, Ignatius and Aslam, our bishops, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of the family whom you have summoned before you in your compassion, O merciful Father. Gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. And the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. As it is in heaven, give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin, and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you. Let's bow at each other and wish each other peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are we who are called to the supper of the Lamb.
Let us pray. O oh God, who bestow heavenly gifts upon your church, safeguard, we pray, the gift you have given, that the gift of the Holy Spirit poured out upon her may retain all its force, and that this spiritual food may gain her abundance of eternal redemption. Grant this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Your and may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. This Mass is ended. Let us go in the peace of Christ. Thank <laughs> you.